Hello, friends, welcome to Deep Sight. Take you on a journey through historical time and space and into the millennium of Europe's medieval history. Before further introducing the history of various European countries, we hope to use this video to show you the migration trajectories of the main human races in Europe over thousands of years, so as to have a thorough understanding of the current pattern of the entire Europe. Insights into the formation process of human races in Europe from the perspectives of anthropology and linguistics. Where did the ancestors of Europeans come from? Let's start with human migration. Human migration history is a complex and fascinating topic. How modern Homo sapiens expanded from Africa to Eurasia. Early Homo sapiens left Africa about 2 million years ago, and the ancestors of Homo sapiens began to evolve in Africa. The earliest human fossil remains were found in Ethiopia, Lucy, scientific name Australopithecus afarensis, about 3.2 million years ago. These early humans gradually left Africa and traveled throughout North Africa, Europe, and Asia. Humans walked completely upright and became Homo erectus and walked out of Africa. The current evidence appears about 1.8 million years ago, and Dmanasai man became the earliest human fossil discovered outside Africa. They belong to the category of Homo erectus and mark the first attempt by humans to move out of Africa. Acheulean hand axes are representative of the stone tools of Homo erectus and bear witness to their distribution outside of Africa. The migration from this stage to modern Homo sapiens took a long time of nearly 2 million years. About 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens expanded from East Africa to the Arabian Peninsula and then entered Eurasia. Factors such as climate change, competition for food, and curiosity for exploration prompted Homo sapiens to move out of Africa. This process is not a one-time large-scale transfer, but slow and gradual. In short, the reasons why humans left Africa may include a variety of factors, including survival pressure, curiosity, climate change, etc. This journey is full of adventures, difficulties, and dangers but it also creates opportunities for the development of human civilization. Compared with this history, the emergence of civilization that we have records and evidence shows is just a drop in the ocean of time. Compared with the age of the universe, the formation of the Milky Way, and the lifespan of the Earth, all of our history is just a vast universe of stars, a short to medium process. According to the latest research, the ancestors of modern Europeans came from many different regions, forming a diverse genome. The origin of Europeans began with the migration of late Homo sapiens, who migrated from Africa to Europe due to climate change and famine about 70,000 years ago. This group of late Homo sapiens is called the F group. They have specific genetic characteristics in molecular anthropology. The F group entered the Mesopotamia from Palestine at the junction of North Africa and Asia, then moved to the Iranian Plateau, the Indus River Basin, and finally arrived in Southeast Asia. The other part is the Cro-Magnets, one of the important ancestors of ancient Europe. They entered Europe from the Bosporus in Turkey and then migrated westward along the Danube River Valley. Characteristics of the Cro-Magnets include tall stature, brown skin, high nose bridges, and high intelligence. The genes of modern Europeans also include the primitive farmers from the Near East, Middle Eastern farmers, and the Indo-European people of the Eastern European steppes, the Yemnea. The genes of these groups eventually became dominant in the genetic genealogy of Europeans. Status. In short, the ancestors of Europeans came from the steppes of Africa, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe, forming a diverse ancestry. The genomes of modern Europeans are the result of multiple waves of migration, not a single origin. As today's mainstream Indo-European race, also known as Caucasian race or Indo-European race in the past, is a historical concept used to describe various ethnic groups that use Indo-European languages. These peoples include the Hittites, Medes, and Persians in Western Asia, the Aryans in South Asia, the Greeks and Romans in Southern Europe, the Slavs in Eastern Europe, the Germans in Northern Europe, and the Celts in Western Europe. However, modern science no longer uses concepts such as Caucasian race or Indo-European race as they are considered obsolete in physical anthropology. The genetic makeup of modern Europeans is extremely complex, spanning multiple historical periods and geographical regions. Proto-Indo-Europeans are a hypothetical prehistoric people who spoke Proto-Indo-European, 
the ancestor of the Indo-European language family, according to linguistic reconstructions. Knowledge about them comes primarily from linguistic reconstructions, as well as material evidence from archaeology and paleogenetics. Mainstream theory holds that the Proto-Indo-European people originated from the Yamna culture in the Eastern European steppes of Eurasia. These Proto-Indo-Europeans probably lived during the late Neolithic age, around 400 BC. Their descendants are spread across Eurasia, including Anatolia, the Hittites, the Aegean, the linguistic ancestors of the Mycenaean civilization, Northern Europe, the Cordedware culture, Central Asia, the Yamnea culture, and the fringe areas of Southern Siberia, Northern Xinjiang, and Western Mongolia, Afanasivo culture. The migration of these ancient Indo-Europeans had a profound impact on the development of world history and formed many prominent countries, such as Hittites, Medes, Persia, India, Greece, and Rome. Eventually, after thousands of years of migration, integration, and evolution, the main racial classifications of modern Europeans were formed, including the following major races. Nordic race. This race is mainly distributed in the plains and coastal areas of Northern Europe. Characteristics include a high nose bridge, light colored eyes, and blonde or flaxen hair, including the United Kingdom, Ireland, Netherlands, Germany, Poland, Nordic countries, etc. Alpine race. The Alpine race is distributed in Central Europe and has a broad skull shape and a broad forehead. The skin pigmentation is light, the hair color is dark, and the eyes are medium color, including France, Italy, Austria, Switzerland, etc. Mediterranean people. Mediterranean people are distributed in Southern Europe, the Mediterranean coast, and the Balkan Peninsula. The skull shape is narrow, the face is long, the eyebrow arch is prominent, the hair and eyes are black, and the skin color is darker, including Greece, Italy, Spain, Yugoslavia countries, etc. It is important to note that these classifications are only a simplified way of describing the diversity of Europeans. In fact, the racial composition of Europe is very complex and is influenced by historical, cultural, geographical, and genetic factors. The well-documented time of the Indo-Europeans can be traced back to 3000 BC. After a thousand years, around 2000 BC, the Proto-Indo-Europeans began to expand, and some people moved westward into the Balkan Peninsula. Among them one group traveled south and settled to found ancient Greece. They were the ancestors of the great Aristotle and Socrates. Another group of Indo-Europeans migrated to the western part of the Eastern European steppes, to the lower reaches of the Danube River and continued westward along the Danube River, spending the cold winter crossing the towering Alps. This group of people should not have been the leaders at that time, because they have chosen a more difficult and dangerous road, who would have thought that after climbing over the towering snow-capped peaks, on the other side is the Garden of Eden, which is as warm as spring and suitable for farming. They were the lucky people who discovered the Italian peninsula. They are what we know as Latins. Their descendants became the Romans, the pinnacle representative of ancient civilization that shocked the world. They were the later Mediterranean people. Today, we have no way to examine how these primitive people chose different directions when they migrated in different directions. However, the choice of this direction established different destinies in the future. They found people with warm and comfortable natural geographical conditions and had stable food and shelter, put on gorgeous clothes, established civilization, country, and army. And what about those who choose the easy path without challenges? However, they experienced thousands more hardships and became barbarians among the later civilized Latino population. Most of those who did not cross the Alps and headed west remained in what is today France, and the forests of northern Italy, who were later called Gauls by the Romans. Gaul, French pronunciation, Gaul Latin, Gallia, is the name of a region in ancient Western Europe, including today's France, Belgium, Northern Italy, the Southern Netherlands, Western Switzerland, and the West Bank of the Rhine River in Germany. The word was first invented by the Romans to collectively refer to the Celts who lived in these areas. Celts is the name of an ancient ethnic group in Europe, hence the name of the Celtic language family. The Celtic language family is relatively close to the Italian language family. The Celts were first formed in South Germany in Central Europe. Their appearance characteristics belong to the Celtic type of the Nordic race, and they spread to the surrounding areas from there. Today's Celts can refer to not only the Irish, 
but also the four remaining Celtic-speaking peoples including Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and Brittany. It is a concept in a cultural and linguistic category. The Gauls actually called themselves a branch of the Celts. They spoke the Gaulish language and had a basically consistent way of life, social organization, and Druidic religion. The appearance of the Gauls is the product of a mixture of Nordic and Alpine races. In addition to the Gauls, another branch of the Indo-Europeans continued to migrate southwest. They reached what is now northern and eastern Spain, and found that they finally reached the end of the continent, surrounded by the vast sea. They chose to settle here and became Celtic Iberians. So today's Spanish peninsula is called the Iberian Peninsula. Another branch of the Indo-Europeans migrated northwest. They could vaguely see the island opposite. They crossed the English Channel. This group of people was called the Celtic Britons, or the Ancient Britons. They were also ancient Celtic people, a branch of the Tetra people that existed in prehistoric Britain and Roman Britain before the Anglo-Saxon invasion. They became the original inhabitants of the area south of the River Forth in Great Britain. The earliest evidence of Celtic Britons on the island of Great Britain dates back to the Iron Age of Britain. What we call Great Britain today actually comes from this. The people we talked about above are collectively called Celts. They are widely distributed in Western and Central Europe. They were the authentic early primitive inhabitants of the European continent before the invasion of ancient Rome and the later Germanic people. The last group of primitive Indo-Europeans took the most difficult road. Perhaps they did not expect that the winter in the north would be so cold. They went all the way north and entered the most uninhabited place in Europe, Northern Europe, and parts of Central Europe, including present-day Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Based on historical documents and archaeological evidence, we can infer that the earliest Germanic people lived in Scandinavia, today's southern Sweden and western Norway, and some migrated to southern Europe. During the Roman Empire, the Germanic people moved south to northern Germany and split into several tribes. They drove away the Celts who lived in the vast plains north of the Alps and founded several states on the ruins of the Roman Empire after its fall. During their development, the Germans absorbed the knowledge and experience of the Greeks and Romans, as well as the modified Christianity derived from Judaism, and rose rapidly before the 13th century. No one could have imagined that the Germans, who had chosen the worst living conditions, would grow from barbarism to civilization and become the largest nation in the history of European civilization. Their culture, language, and politics would have the most profound impact on Europe. They established a series of countries including the Frankish Kingdom, which later evolved into the current countries of Germany, Denmark, Britain, Italy, and other countries. Descendants of modern Germanic people include Germans, English, Dutch, Swedes, Norwegians, etc. The name Germanic people was given to them by the Romans. This name is simple and crude, meaning people nearby or, more savagely, people in the forest. It is the Roman name for the Northern European groups. The English translation of German is today's English. The name Germany is Germany, but this is not actually the name of the Germans themselves. They call their country Deutschland or Die Bundesrepublik Deutschland, which means the land of the people. Sometimes it is also called Das Land der Dichter und Denker, the poet and a nation of thinkers. The Celts and Germans were the early Indo-Europeans who migrated westward, while the eastward primitive tribes entered the Persian Plateau in Southwest Asia today. They settled here and began to develop civilization, establishing the Mede Kingdom and the Persian Kingdom. These people are called Medes and Persians. They are the main ethnic group of the Aryans in Iran today. If you'd like to learn more about the later history of the Persians, check out our past episodes for details. The other part of the primitive Indo-Europeans who did not stop migrating continued to move southeast from Iran. They invaded India from the Iranian plateau around 2000 BC and gradually adapted to the climate and environment there, conquered the local Dravidian indigenous inhabitants. In order to consolidate their rule, as the victors in the conquest, they called themselves Aryans which means noble in ancient Indian Sanskrit. Although they were nomadic people in the past, they convinced the locals that they were born of rulers. The Aryans created the caste system to divide social classes and maintain their dominance. The Varna system is derived from the description of the Indian gods in the classical Indian mythology, Rig Veda. Varna originally means color, skin color, so the origin of the caste system can be inferred. The white-skinned Aryans were defined as a higher caste, 
while the conquered Dravidians, dark-skinned indigenous inhabitants, were defined as a lower caste. The later Jati system was another name for the caste system, which was formed in the 6th century BC. It was produced on the basis of Varna, but with a different footing and divided different castes, mainly based on occupation. The Jati system met the needs of social division of labor and formed smaller professional groups. Aryan and today's Iran are actually the same word. Iran has always referred to Persia in ancient history. Because today's Europeans and people in northern India have a common ancestor, this ancestor is called the Proto-Indo-European, and their language is called Indo-European. The above content is the earliest trajectory of the Indo-European people in Europe. So let's talk about what happened after they settled in these places and their evolution. Among all these early inhabitants, ancient Greece and ancient Rome were the most glorious representatives. They were the first to break away from the label of barbarism, enter the ranks of civilization, and live a civilized life. Rome eventually became the first superpower in human history. From a small Latin village, it established an advanced city, unified the Italian peninsula, and then conquered the Iberian Peninsula in Greece. From monarchy to republic era, the famous Caesar the Great went all the way north to sweep across the barbaric Celtic Gauls who had repeatedly invaded and sacked Rome, completely eliminating the hidden dangers from there. The Romans also crossed the English Channel and directly occupied southern Britain. To the northeast, the Romans moved into the Balkans and conquered the barbarian Thracians there. Along the Mediterranean, they conquered Egypt and occupied all of North Africa, eventually turning the Mediterranean into the inland sea of the empire. It reached its peak of glory during the reign of Emperor Trajan in the 2nd century AD. The first stage of the history of European nations formed a new situation, civilized Rome and barbarians outside Rome. Outside the civilized, wealthy and powerful Roman Empire, all people who are not of my race are barbarians. They don't have the patience to have a detailed understanding of peoples who speak a different language from their own, but simply refer to them as the neighboring people, the barbarians in the forest, and the Germans. Audience friends, thank you for accompanying and watching. This is our content for this issue. In the next episode, we will continue to tell you the story of the Middle Ages in Europe and introduce the historical causes of the formation of today's European pattern. You are welcome to leave a message and subscribe, communicate and discuss together, learn and progress together. Pursue the truth of history and foresee a bright future. See you next time.